Nigerian president, Bola Metinubu, today signed the first set of executive orders of his administration looking to ease tax and enhance the ease of doing business at the same time. The four executive orders were the Finance Act 2023 effective date variation, the Customs Excise Tariff Variation Order, the Excise Tax on Telecoms, as well as the suspension of green tax on single use of plastic and levy on certain vehicles. Making the announcements on behalf of Mr. President earlier today was Dele Alake, who is the President's Special Advisor on Special Duties, Communications and Strategy. Take a listen. In his inaugural speech, His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu promised to address business on friendly fiscal policy measures and multiplicity of taxes. Consequently, President Bola Tinumbu, in fidelity to the pledge to put Nigerians at the center of government policies, has signed the following executive orders. Executive Order 1, the Finance Act, effective date variation order 2023, has now deferred the commencement date of the changes contained in the Act from May 28, 2023, to September 1, 2023. This is to ensure adherence to the 90 days minimum advance notice for tax changes as contained in the 2017 National Tax Policy. Executive Order 2, the Customs Excise Tariff Variation Amendment Order 2023, this has also shifted the commencement date of the tax changes from March 27, 2023 to August 1, 2023, and also in line with the national tax policy. Order three, the president has given an order suspending the 5% tax on telecommunication services, as well as the excise duties escalation on locally manufactured goods. Four, further to his commitment to creating a business-friendly environment, the President has ordered the suspension of the newly introduced green tax by way of excise tax on single-use plastics, including plastic containers and bottles. In addition, the President has ordered the suspension of import tax adjustment levy on certain categories of vehicles. Like I said earlier on, any vehicle of uh, 2,000 capacity, engine capacity and above, which uh, the tax was imposed upon has now been suspended. So it means that for the meantime, in the interim, the tax imposed on any vehicle of 2,000 cc and above is now suspended. Our aim is not to tax production. Our aim is to increase our productive activity, capacity to produce. Then we can tax our consumption. And that is the direction of our economic planning. And then we want to increase the trust that we have in government and if, for, if you observe what has happened in the last few days, the last few months that we've been here, we've kept to our word part of what we are doing today just to increase this trust that we are here to do what is the best for the country. Well, let's get industry analysis into this list of development now as we bring on Yomi Olugwenro, he's a partner and West Africa tax leader at Deloitte, Nigeria. A warm welcome to the show and we thank you for coming in at this very short notice. Thank you so much. Uh, this is a very big development, thank just as big much. as it gets. We've got to throw it straight to those of you who are industry experts into this. Let me give me your first word on these four executive orders. Well, uh, Bosin, I think as you can hear from uh, that press release, it's, it's a bit of um, uh, good news and a pat on the, on the back, if you like, to, to taxpayers. Um, I think it's, it's bad enough for taxpayers to have to grapple with additional taxes or um, higher rates you know, for taxes. But when those changes come uh, in such a sudden, hurried manner and just rush through, it creates a completely different kind of disruption to, 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 to business planning. And for me, I think this is, this is an appropriate signaling to, uh, to the market and to the taxpaying public that we will collect taxes uh, in a lot more responsible manner. Um, we need to engage appropriately. We need to ensure that uh, implementation date, effective date, all of that are in sync with extant rules uh, and, and, and regulations. So um, the, the, the 
push for, uh, if you like, the delay for the, for, for, for the commencement of the year, for example, by an extra 30 days, exactly in tandem with you know, an existing uh, national tax policy, uh, which says that you must have a minimum of three months when you have new laws changed. Um, you must allow at least three months for taxpayers to, to get acquainted with the provision, uh, keep their, put, put their houses in order, yeah. and, 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 and begin the implementation. But, but we, we didn't have that done. Um, if, you, if you remember, um, many of these amendments, the Finance Act, uh, of 2023, for example, was um, signed on the 28th, you know, of, 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 of May. A, a day before uh, inauguration. A day, a, a day before inauguration. A day before um, the, the penultimate night, actually, uh, of the of president. And, and, and of, the, of the president, yes. right? And um, the act itself actually specified 1st of May. You know, when so you went, kind of when, retroactive you know, in it, terms it kind of, of retroactive. And so um, w w what the FRS did uh, subsequent to that was to just look for um, a practical measure, uh, knowing fully well that we didn't get to see uh, the, the, the law until uh, later in June, right? Um, the FRS in its own wisdom say uh, we will push the implementation date of 1st of July and all of that. But um, this has now put finality. Uh, it's an executive order, 1st of September uh, being the commencement date for, 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 so, for the so new so finance I expect some amendments to the Finance Act provisions now that the implementation date has been shifted. Do you think that should be? If well, yes, what needs to change? You know, I, I, I think what's been changed for now is just um, the implementation date. Um, I wouldn't expect a lot of you know, energy to be invested uh, in trying to change the Finance Act or the provisions of the Finance Act, what we actually need is a holistic review of, you know, the, the, the various taxing legislations. Because uh, as you know, this is the fourth in the series of Finance Acts, mm. all right? Uh, some of the provisions of the Finance Act 2021 were amended in Finance Act 2023, and the same cycle had happened in the prior year. So, this is part of the thing that creates uncertainty and confusion in the market. So when you, as good as annual passage of finance acts could be, um, you then create different kind of confusion. So uh, taxpayer needs to remember, you know, how many finance acts have, you know, been existing over a, a period of time, uh, which one changed what, you know, and all of that. So uh, once you do that for maximum of seven um, to, to, or thereabouts, some will say 10 years, what you then need is to consolidate codify, all, all of the code, codify. codify and get all of those uh, mm. pre-existing legislations repealed and all mm. of the regulations repealed and have a new enactment yeah. that consolidates everything. It's simpler, it's easier, and there's a single um, version of the truth. Mm. How do you think this uh, Finance Act, do you think it's robust enough to uh, tackle the various fiscal imbalances in the economy, structurally speaking, that this administration will have to deal with considering where we're coming from. Do you think this Finance Act is just what it is? No, I, I, I don't think so. I, I think the Finance Act, it, it, it's a short and palliative, right? Um, if, if you cast your mind back to um, the, the, the return to democracy, uh, right from President Obasanjo, there were a lot of attempts made at you know, revamping the law, some laws, you know, uh, um, some bills were submitted just right at the beginning and all through his eight years and then the subsequent administration, we didn't have some of them passed. And so what, uh, from a pragmatic perspective, what um, uh, the past administration has done is to say, look, if it's going to take us quite a long time to get through the parliamentary process of enacting new laws, how can we tweak, you know, how can we make uh, the most that we can make um, of, of the existing law through executive order, through finance act, you know, and all of that. And that's, and that's what has done. I think there are a lot more fundamental issues that if we don't tackle those, we won't get our fiscal so, space um, so that's how do in we order. get a holistic review of our entire tax basket of laws? I, I, I believe the, 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 this has already been muted, this has already been talked. Uh, we, we know that it's easier said than done. Um, part of some of the policy documents that are in circulation, um, you know, purportedly owned by, by, by this administration, is an attempt to do a, 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 a more holistic review of the whole taxing legislation. So what is done is to say, look, I came in and practically the first day, um, of my exemption of office, I already have to grapple with taxpayers confronting me with complaints about, I mean, it, 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 those, those, I mean, I got to see the finance act 2023 after the president has been sworn in, the new president has been sworn in, and it was supposedly um, signed, you know, the night before. Um, the fiscal policy measures, um, you know, that were also varied by those executive yes, orders and all yes. of that, some of them were signed 
you know, in the twilight of the administration, sometimes so, so in this May, is a kind of rolling back some of the things that Buh President Buhari signed before he left office. In well, his final days, in the manner of speaking. Well, it, it didn't quite roll it back completely, uh, but some, some bit of cushion. Uh, first, uh, there, there are two essential um, things that were done with these executive orders. One is to move the commencement date of implementation. Of, of implementation. So buy some extra time for taxpayers to be able to grapple with them. Uh, so Finance Act 2023 stays. However... The implementation date is allowed to uh, to, to follow what, what the tax policy says. Now, but for the, the content of the fiscal policy measure, which is where you have the uh, the green taxes on uh, single-use plastics and yes. a certain category of um, uh, of, of automobile uh, excise on telecom and all of that, what the executive order says is a suspension. So meaning that it allows time for more consultation mm. uh, and, and probably this will, this will include some revision of rates mm. or exclusion of certain items. So there's a lot more hope on, on the excise side and on the fiscal policy measures that um, there's a possibility that when uh, the market engage, when manufacturers engage and, and, the, and the operators engage, they will have a little bit of, um, of, of, of relief from there. A bit of room to wiggle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Interesting. Uh, well, how quickly then do you think? Because when you put out the various, uh, that suspension or removal, or whatever, you've got to have a cabinet in place. How quickly do you think uh, the new administration should have a cabinet in place uh, to put flesh to all of this that we're talking about? I actually do hope that we do it sooner than later. Um, we, we, we had a similar scenario in, 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 in the first um, uh, term of uh, President Buhari when we had to wait uh, close to six months uh, before we had the, 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 the cabinet constituted. And the country paid dearly for that. Um, I think the energy uh, and the mood uh, in the country and with this new administration is that it's, it's clearly known that uh, we don't have that luxury of time. Um, the market will punish you. The economy will punish you. You saw what happened happen with um uh, the first two, three days of uh, post-inauguration, the market was, was heavily bullish, you know, so everybody saw a body language that looks like, you know, um, we're ready to work, and, 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 and we really, really need to build on that. A few days after that, uh, you started seeing some bit of bearish trend, you know, so now things are kind of balancing. I'm <coughs> hoping that we don't have to wait, um, and, and, and we need to have the cabinet uh, constituted so that uh, appropriate organs and agencies of, of, of government can, and can take this issue heads on. How easy do you Thing President Tinubu and his team will be on this very rope they're walking in terms of getting revenue increase on one side and ease of doing business on the other, balancing social impact with the facts that they need every dime, every cobble, every naira on the table. Well, I think I think I think the country will have to um, hold uh, President Buhari very strongly, uh, President uh, Tinubu on, uh, very strongly on his promise. Uh, he came on the back of uh, I'm a market focused leader. Um, he came with antecedent of you know how he uh, you know walked through very turbulent um, uh, tenure, period tenure uh, you know in tenure office. in 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 office yes. in in, um, in Lagos State, yes. and it's, it's it's a lot more complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. But but with that kind of a pedigree and and, and the hope he sold. Um, it, it, it can disappoint uh, uh, the masses of the country. Um, he would need to do serious, serious uh, balancing because quite a lot of the levers, you know, that the president has got to pull as such that will impose some heavy pain, you know, and it's already doing that. And so if you don't balance it with some of the fiscal um, uh, uh, measures that you have at your disposal, um, it, it, it will be tough for the, for, for the economy. So you don't think it's, it's, it's all about providing palliatives in terms of cash transfers and all of that? Do you think could use business tools, executive order tools, to incentivize the economy, incentivize manufacturing, industrial production, incentivize consumption that will allow the government to even collect more VAT that it wants to do? I, I think it will be a mix of you know, all of those and, and, and even more, including um, ensuring that the whatever savings is, you know, we, we, we we're able to make from uh, all the subsidies being removed, whether it's from FX or from fuel, you know, and all of that, we channel that to a lot more infrastructural financing such that why those short term palliative provide, you know, like some immediate cushion, uh, what's actually going to get the economy back buoyant and for a long term sustainable uh, benefit is those investment in those critical infrastructure. The five percent mover of uh, uh, telecom services, uh, whatever, is that, is that that's some good news, right? 
Absolutely. Uh, some good news, but it's a suspension, uh, like, like I did not, say. Not a total not, not a total removal. So it's, it's suspended um, so that they, there's quite and a lot of... Not, and there's no definite time as to whether it will come back, when it will come back. At, at least nothing was said uh, during the, the, the press the conference, person. but it's understood that um, it, it's to allow a lot more time for consultation uh, with the telecom operators. There's a lot of clarity that's actually uh, required, what's covered. So the operators, um, those who are providing um, a lot of ancillary, ancillary services, services within the value, value chain, chain, you know, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that needs to be done and done also in a way that recognizes the fact that this is also a sector where a lot of capital injection and financing is still required to actually uh, let the broadband penetration and all of that uh, go uh, while it's has done the billions and billions of dollars in investment so far. Absolutely, but 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 you give some to get some. Um, you, yeah, you, they just do five G, for example. Some of them are just rolling on five G, and that that takes that's a whole a lot investment. of money. That's a huge huge investment. That's 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 a, that's a whole lot of huge investment. And yes. and and sometimes we also look at um, you know penetration uh, of of these services from what happened in some of the Ibro cities, um, what happens in Lagos, what happened in Abuja, okay, and a number of cities. Um, but if you travel well across um, these countries, you will know that um, there's a lot more investment that is still required to really um, get every part of the country to, to, to benefit from this opportunity. From, from, from telecommunications sector. But again, folks were beginning to complain a little bit, by the way, that the telecom folks are charging us more for virtually everything than any other tax. Well, we make investment, we've got to pay more tax. Absolutely. But again, I think the Manufacturers Association will be having a very good night tonight. I don't know where they're having a party somewhere <laughs> to celebrate this uh, <laughs> suspension of, of um, uh, uh, carbonated... And because there's been a whole lot of issue around whether this should, should be suspended, when should it be implemented, should it be a revert back to 2024 agreement. They complained that they were not told uh, when the new one was signed before President Buhari left office and what have you. So it looks like a, a great light there for the locally manufactured, uh, uh, from, for local producers. Uh, absolutely, but I would say a window of opportunity uh, because, again, Suspension doesn't mean ab absolute removal. termination or removal, uh, but this is a great opportunity. It at least shows that the president is willing to listen uh, and is going to take in those feedback. If you listen to what um, uh, Mr. Delia, like he said, he, he, he reiterated the kind of sentiment you know, that, that, that manufacturers want to hear, knowing that we feel your pain. We understand that uh, there's, there's, there's a, a bit of pressure in that area, and government will en uh, engage. We want you to trust us. We want you to know that we will uh, implement this new, this, this, this new policies in, in, you know, in a very collaborative manner. Is tax the removal or reduction, the silver bullet, for the deindustrialization of Nigeria? I, 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 don't, I don't think so. Um, I, I, I think um, there was some uh, recent um, research that was done, um, even touching about the tax expenditure you know, of the country and how much of waiver and exemptions that we've granted in certain sectors. And when, when, when you do the mapping, you realize that not, not necessarily translating to um, the, kind of, the kind of growth and investment yes. and productivity yeah, you that you give waivers, but you can you give the waivers, but you can't see the money. Just I, like full I, subsidy. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> so so, so what's, what's required is that sometimes we, we provide short-term palliative for, for, for sicknesses and ailments that require you know, more surgical you know, intervention. Mm -hmm. And unless you do that, you only Going to be throwing money and incentives at, 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 at many of these more fundamental issues and problems. This is the first set of executive orders. Do you think the next executive orders will go on those tax holidays and waivers? No, it's already done. Uh, actually, um, well, a significant part of it. Um, the, 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 the center focus of the Finance Act 2023 yes. was that quite a lot of unproductive incentives were actually cleaned, cleaned out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you see different kind of allowances and investments and reliefs that taxpayers were previously enjoyed were actually cleaned out. Um, so we left with you know, more fundamental incentives like Pioneer um, and, 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 and free trade zone you know, in, in schemes that, that are operating within the country. So that's, that's already been done. So uh, by 1st of September, uh, quite a number of uh, the incentives and, 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 and waivers that uh, businesses enjoy will no longer be there. It looks like September is the month we have to, we have to be on the lookout for. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's September. September the 1st, I'm going to keep, uh, just mark that on my, on my calendar. calendar. Do you think these executive orders are fundamental enough to drive 
the size of foreign direct investment, foreign investment, capital inflows that we need into Nigeria, do you think, or oh, we're just still scratching the surface? You know, I, I, I think it's fair to say we're just scratching the surface, but it's a good place to start. It's a good place to start. I, I, I love the signaling effects of this kind of communication to say, look, um, we, it, it, there's been a lot of hue and cry as to why will these kind of changes be, you know, be introduced at the you know, tail end of an administration? How come we're getting to know about them you know, months or weeks you know, after they've been supposedly signed you know, and all of that? And you're saying, look, you, you, hold on. We will review the whole process. We, will, we, we want to make sure that when laws are to be passed, if there are extant rules guiding how they're to be introduced, we will follow all of that. So that's, that's, that's part of the, the assurance and the confidence that the market wants. Um, taxes are paid all over the world, uh, but the rule of certainty, the rule of clarity, uh, the rule of predictability needs to be uh, brought in into, in, into the system. Know what you're paying, when you're paying it, and who, who? You're, who, you, who are you paying uh, to. And, what, and what's your fallback when you are being wrongly asked to pay what's you know uh, what's okay, not kind of supposed to be and, and resolution and mechanism the dispute resolution mechanism that you know works and you know is ti timely mm. and, and 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 you can be you, you you can be rest assured that it's it's it will be in your favor when when when, when you have the uh, the fact backing you up interesting back to the balancing act of yeah. revenue against social against ease of doing uh, business how much more would you like to see happen moving forward. Broadly speaking, the administration need heavy money, uh, even from the local environment. How do you think that can be unlocked? We, we, we need a lot of money, um, but I think the approach we adopt complicate our issue a lot more. Uh, what the government does um, quite a lot is we identify a problem and we're looking for a new tax type to help us solve that. That's why you have the, um, the, 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 the new uh, uh, import levy, uh, for example, introduced in the Finance Act for yes. imports that were brought out of Africa. And when you read through the commentary, it was meant to fund part of our obligation to our regional uh, bodies, oh, AFREXIM, yes. ADB, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that. Yes. Uh, when it was telecom, we introduced uh, IT levy. When it was you know, education, we introduced education tax levy. And, and the list just so goes just on. So, tax all so over the what place. we need is to consolidate, yes. all right, consolidate Consolidate all of these taxes and, and get efficiency out of them. Can we, can we do something different from just throwing taxes at everything? Uh, that's exactly the point. But they're going to ask additional one thousand naira from your car. <laughs> <laughs> that's you that's, pay additional one thousand naira. That's as, just as put as it on the table. As as it could get, both. Yes. Uh, so when I need to pay a thousand naira every year yes. to prove that I own. You know, a vehicle uh, for which I already have. Um, Perhaps you just write uh, your name on the of, car, on the body of the car, and just write Yomi Olugbe. That's the height of ridiculousness. I just, I just, <laughs> well, it's my. Just read the number. That's mine. So, but, but again, we can't throw, keep throwing taxes at everything. Absolutely. So let's get a lot more efficiency. So two fundamental issues that I believe it's on the table of the president as far as you know, reforming the tax base is concerned. Yes. Uh, one will be cons tax consolidation. You know, so we have too many levies, too many tax type that is creating compliance obligation. It's complicating the ease of paying tax. That's number you one. Those of you who are consultants who have to wait through all the books. But, but the truth actually is that some of those taxes are even, you know, being implemented by non-state uh, non actors. Non actors. And, and they just, you know, uh, complicating the, uh, the, the, the market all, all the more. So do that. And then in addition to that, also unify revenue collection agencies. We have oh, too like many. We, we have, to, we we have to, too many of we them. We need to unify, not just the exchange rate. No, not we just the exchange rate. Yes. Unify yes. The, the collection agencies. Yes. All right. We have too many of them. So you're dealing with customs, you're dealing with FRS, you're dealing with RAMFAG. You sometimes even um, law enforcement agencies get into the in, in, into, into the, the into the ring. You know, wanting to to, 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 to chase that. So, um, oh, but this we, is good news. This is good news. This is good news. Oh, this, good let's let's, let's celebrate this. Thank you so much. Pleasure. I'd like to raise in the courting. Thank you so much. Pleasure.